Hi, this is a metamorphic rock lab tutorial for physical geology. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to um, identify metamorphic rocks. And in order to do the metamorphic rock lab, first of all, you'll need to have um, all the metamorphic rocks in your rock kit. Um, so make sure that you take a look at your um, the, uh, the list of rocks and minerals that comes with the kit. Um, take a look at how many uh, metamorphic rocks you should have, and then look in your bag and make sure all those rocks, um, is, you have the, same, the correct number of rocks present. Um, what else will you need for this lab? You will need to read about identification of metamorphic rocks in the, the lab uh, in, uh, instructions. And then you will um, need the worksheet so you can um, work through all the clues necessary to identify the rocks. And uh, as usual, you will turn that in, but it won't be graded, and you can use that as an organizational tool to help you with the uh, photo journal and with the, um, the lab quiz. And um, then, as usual, you will also uh, take photos of your metamorphic rocks. Uh, make sure that the labels on the rocks are, are visible and that your pictures are clear so that I can see that you've uh, identified the correct rocks when you're answering the questions. And also make sure that the text of the question is visible uh, in association with the picture. Either you take a photograph of the questions along with the rocks, or you title um, or provide information attached to the digital image that has the text of the question in it. OK, so as we saw with metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks, there are some questions you have to answer when you start to identify different types of rocks. And with metamorphic rocks, the first thing we ask ourselves is, uh, are we looking at a foliated or non-foliated metamorphic rock? So these are the, the, the main types of textures associated with metamorphic rocks. Foliation uh, refers to kind of the parallel arrangement of minerals. So this could be that you have uh, minerals that uh, you know naturally are just kind of a flat shaped or um, kind of a planar shaped minerals. And when a rock forms, for example, in a sedimentary environment, they might, you know, those minerals might just kind of arrange themselves in a somewhat random pattern. But when they're subjected to directed pressure, kind of a squeezing or, sh or sh shearing type of pressure or, or tension, then the minerals can uh, start to uh, align themselves parallel to each other. And that's going to be um, evidenced by certain clues that you look for in the rock. So foliated rocks, uh, there's different types of foliation. But foliation happens because of directed pressure, meaning that there's a directionality to the stress that the rocks are under. Um, so like, for example, at regional metamorphism, metamorphic belts, you'll, you'll see uh, foliated uh, rocks. So it could also be that the rocks, uh, the minerals that make up the, the parent rock um, were just kind of random in shape, but they can actually change shape if they're subjected to enough heat and directed pressure. And again, you can uh, see that with uh, the foliated pattern of the rocks. But there are some foliated, some metamorphic rocks, excuse me, that form um, uh, in, in the absence of directed pressure, or, or the minerals are um, all kind of equant in shape. So you don't notice any kind of foliation. So how do we identify a non-foliated metamorphic rock? Well, we have to you know, uh, do some property tests um, or, or just kind of observe the rocks and look for clues to see what types of rocks they are to give the rocks a name. What does foliation look like? Well, there's many types of foliation, but you can see in these pictures here, some foliation is obvious. And what I mean by that is we see that there are kind of bands of light colored minerals and bands of dark colored minerals in both of these rocks. And those bands can, might be flat or they might be somewhat folded. Um, so these types of rocks, this foliation might be somewhat obvious. There's a layering to the rocks. Uh, other foliation types are not quite as obvious. So I'm going to uh, walk you through some types of foliation uh, that are common and some types of the more common types of foliated metamorphic rocks. So imagine that you have a, a um, like a mudstone. 
this is not a, a metamorphic rock. This is a sedimentary rock, and it forms because of mostly clay minerals that settle in the bottom of a lake, perhaps, and they form the sedimentary rock over time. So the clay minerals are teeny minerals, but they're, they're kind of flat-shaped minerals. So if this rock were buried deeply and put under a lot of pressure, then the clay minerals would start to align themselves parallel to each other, and some of the water would be squeezed out of, out of the rock and out of the minerals. And so the result would be something called like a slaty uh, cleavage. So you don't actually see the clay the minerals, but you can see the, the very planar nature of the rock. This is a, a very kind of thin slice of uh, slate. Uh, as you can see in this photograph here, this uh, guy is making uh, tiles out of slate out of this rock because it just breaks easily in these flat sheets and it's because of the planar alignment of these clay minerals in the rock. So another type of foliation is, let's say that uh, a rock like this slate was subjected to even more heat and even more pressure we know uh, from your reading about metamorphism that new minerals can develop in the rocks that weren't there in the pre-existing rocks. And one type of mineral that often forms uh, would be mica minerals. You've seen biotite and muscovite both when you were uh, identifying minerals. And those are the minerals, remember, that, that have very strong cleavage in one direction. You can peel them apart into thin sheets. So if micas start to grow, like the clay is going to be kind of transformed into micas, then uh, you'll start to notice a sh more of a uh, shininess to the rock. So it might not be uh, completely obvious at first that you're actually looking at, you know, muscovite or biotite or another type of mica, but the rock can become shinier. So, for example, there's this rock called phyllite um, that has a high proportion of, of um, micas in it, but the micas are teeny, so you can't pick out individual micas. But we know it's foliated. Well, one, you kind of see from the side, you still see a layering to the rock. But the other, this kind of phyllite um, foliation is just kind of a, uh, a sheen to the rock, a shininess to the rock, uh, because of the micas having all their faces facing in one direction, parallel to each other. Uh, if the micas grow larger, then you can actually see the individual micas. And you might get, again, more different minerals forming. So in these pictures here on this slideshow, you see garnets are forming, and you see really kind of a shiny matrix around them. And if you look at it closely, uh, maybe you can pick out that they're kind of a flaky mineral. So this type of foliation is called schistosity. Uh, the, a rock that has this high proportion of schist, this kind of shiny but flaky, this is a better side to this rock, uh, shiny but flaky, um, nature is called a schist. And there's variations to schist. Sometimes there's uh, mica schist, and sometimes we see different minerals forming in that. Uh, sometimes, like this example, this one I'm holding in my hand, has some garnets, but the ones in the picture are more obvious. And, and um, then you get a different type of foliation. This one is probably the most obvious, and it's called banding. Um, and the rock that forms as a result of this uh, compositional banding is a rock called gneiss pronounced nice, spelled G-N-E-I-S-S. -S. So um, this is a nice. And why do you have this layering in the rocks? Well, whether it's oh, kind of a white and black or just uh, kind of relatively light colored versus dark colored bands is due to minerals in the pre-existing rock uh, that have different chemistries align themselves parallel, uh, align themselves kind of uh, aggregate together into bands. Uh, so the dark, more mafic minerals uh, line up and kind of uh, move closer together, and the lighter colored minerals line up and, and move closer together. Uh, because the lighter minerals are felsic, uh, they have a lower melting temperature. Remember that when metamorphism happen, it happens, there is no melting involved. Once there's melting involved and you get a magma, then we're talking about an igneous rock. So no melting has happened, and yet you, you see these um, migration of minerals over long periods of time. So I wanted to remind you, maybe this looks familiar to you. This is a granitic type of, of rock, a uh, rock with, um, it's an igneous rock, and you can see the, the um, white and the dark minerals, but they have kind of a random orientation. If this rock, for example, was subjected to a tremendous 
pressure and tremendous amounts of directed stress, then this might be the result. Or maybe something like this. So you can see similar looking minerals, but they, they're kind of in an organized uh, pattern. So granites are not the only type of rock that can become a nice, but it's just kind of a clear example. So that's um, an example of the kind of the main types of foliation and the rocks that might result from that type of foliation. Um, but some metamorphic rocks are not foliated, and that could be because there's not a differential or directed stress applied to the rocks, uh, or the minerals are pretty kind of equal in shape. So how do you identify these? Um, so um, in this example here is a, a rock, a metamorphic rock, non-foliated, called quartzite. Um, in this slide, it's it's a kind of a grayish color, but uh, the color is not really a good indicator of quartzite. It could be white, it could be a lot of different colors. Sometimes it even exhibits some layering, but that's a sedimentary uh, artifact. So how do you get quartzite? If there's a lot of quartz in the pre-existing rock, like in this example, we're looking at a sandstone that's uh, a, a, a largely quartz sandstone, and if that uh, rock gets kind of buried uh, so that there's recrystallization of the quartz minerals, the quartz grains can kind of grow into each other and produce a different texture. This can also happen with other minerals. For example, if you have a rock, maybe a sedimentary rock that is largely uh, made of calcite, remember the mineral that uh, dissolves easily in acid and is a lot softer than quartz, um, if that becomes metamorphosed, it can produce a rock that might be very similar looking to a quartzite. Um, and this rock is called marble. Uh, sometimes we, you know, we're familiar with marble. We use it for statues and countertops and things like this. And in this picture, we're seeing a, a marble that actually looks like it has this, you know, you might even say it looks like banding. Um, but again, this discoloration is due to slight variations in the um, chemistry of the original rock that was metamorphosed. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is you see in this picture the the rock that becomes metamorphosed into marble uh, has some. Um, organic component or once living things like perhaps uh, uh, shells of once living things. So uh, you looked at a sedimentary rock that had a lot of shell fragments in it, but those shells are composed of calcium carbonate. And so if that rock was subjected to a lot of heat um, and becomes metamorphosed to produce a mo marble, you're no, you're no longer going to see any shell fragments in it. Instead, it's going to be kind of a crystalline looking rock. Uh, so here is an example. Of, of a marble. So the, the calcite grains have reshaped and kind of grown into each other. Uh, some people say this is like a sugary texture. So I told you that quartzite, for example, um, looks like it could have uh, come into multiple colors, including white. Marble can come in multiple colors, including white. So how would you tell those two apart? Well, quartz, quartzite is made of quartz. Quartz is a hard mineral that's non-reactive, does not react to acid. Marble is made of calcite. Calcite is a relatively soft mineral. Uh, for example, it cannot scratch glass. Quartz can. And if it's made of a mineral that's reactive to acid, then the rock, the metamorphic rock marble, would be reactive to acid as well. So there's a couple of ways that you can pretty easily differentiate between non-foliated quartzite and non-foliated marble. So there's a lot of other uh, non-foliated met metamorphic rocks. Some have a little bit of foliation, some none at all. Uh, some are green and red, some are black and white, um, some are kind of almost solid color. What type of rock, you, what type of metamorphic rock results uh, depends on the composition of the parent rock that was metamorphosed and um, the grade of metamorphism, how much heat is subjected to uh, if if there is directed pressure or just kind of um, compaction by burial, things like that. Um, and so in order to identify the other kind of common non-foliated non metamorphic rocks, you have to you know, read about them, see what their characteristic minerals are present, what their characteristic textures are uh, in order to identify them. Okay, so that is a brief overview of how to identify metamorphic rocks. Uh, first question you ask yourself, is this a foliated metamorphic rock or a non-foliated metamorphic rock? If it's foliated, 
then you want to take a closer look at the type of foliation and the minerals present. If it's non-foliated, then you have to determine uh, the minerals present, the composition of the rock, and any other kind of char characteristics that are common to that rock type.